Thank you for tuning into my video. Today we will be doing a lower leg service on a Fox 38 fork. I've had this fork a little over a year now and I figured it was probably about time I showed it some love. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, the tools required for this job are pretty simple. Uh, you will need a drain pan that is not pictured up here to catch all the fluid that will drain out of the fork. And of course to replace that fluid, you will need new fluid. So you will need the Fox 5 weight PTFE suspension fluid for the damper side, the Fox 20 weight gold suspension fluid for the air spring side. You will need your new seal kit, of course. The part number for this kit is 803-01-493. I purchased this kit from the Lost Co. I will put a link down in the description for the kit and the fluid. In case you want to tackle this service yourself, you will need a hammer, torque wrench, it's okay if you don't have one, a ratchet, 10 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter socket, shock pump. Uh, I have two syringes here. Uh, you can use one, but I just have two because I like to keep them separate between the fluids, but you'll need a syringe to push the new fluid into the fork, a two millimeter Allen, and some sort of wrench. Doesn't really matter what size, but try to be a little bit on the bigger side. This one is an 11 16 You really just need it to help pry out the old uh, dust wiper seals. So it's not, it doesn't have to be super exact, but that's pretty much it. Pretty simple. After you have all the tools ready, uh, we be sure to take note of what air pressure you're running because we're going to have to drain all the air out. After you have figured out what you're running in there, we're going to take this cap off. And I just like to use the end of an Allen wrench to let the air out. There's a little Schrader valve up here and you just push down. See this fork start to come in. All the air is out. Be sure to do it a couple times because sometimes air gets trapped in there. Make sure it's all out. Push it down a few times and I think all the air is out. Put this cap back on so I do not lose it. I tend to lose things. Again. And I'll put the shock up here. Okay, I have the shock angled up so I can give you guys a better angle. Sorry, I have to readjust the camera. Uh, we're going to start off by removing this dust cover that covers up your low speed and high speed rebound. Set that off to the side. And now you will need your 2 millimeter Allen to loosen this, this set screw on the side of the low speed rebound. Just crack that loose. And then that'll pull off just like that. Be careful. There is a little washer inside of here that can fall out and easily get lost. So make sure you don't lose that. And set that off to the side. And then your high speed rebound knob will come off just like that. Set that off to the side. And then now you will need a 15 millimeter socket. So I'm gonna go and get that. Okay, got my 15 millimeter socket. I'm gonna loosen. Okay, that wasn't very tight. Loosen that up. There is a crush washer on the end of this. So don't lose that as well. Oh, the kit comes with new ones, so it's okay if you lose that actually. <laughs> now you will need your 10 millimeter. And loosen up this side. Okay, you guys are also going to be a crush washer on this side. Just like that. I'm actually going to leave that nut on. I'll show you why. And uh, now we are ready to remove the lowers from the stanchions here. This is where you'll need your drain pan because there will be fluid that comes out of these holes once they are separated and you pull the lower legs down and off. 
So I'll get the camera reset, get a good angle, get my drain pan, and I'll be right back. Okay, to start the process of removing the lowers from the stanchion, uh, thread the uh, 10 millimeter nut back on, and then grab your 10 millimeter socket and a hammer. Uh, Fox sells special tools that thread onto each side here and then they all have like a flat surface that you can tap on with your hammer but they're like $50 a piece so figured why not just use a socket and a hammer <laughs> it's a little cheaper so all we're going to do is we are going to get a couple threads in on this nut put our 10 millimeter socket back on the nut and then just gently tap on it there it just went kind of hard to see on camera but you can see that the the uh, air spring started to push into the push upwards so you know it's separated so take this nut back off there we go it's already wanting to separate let's let it out and we will do the same thing with the other side. Let's get the 15 millimeter nut, thread that back on and get it started. There we go. And you want to be careful on the edge of the damper is your low speed rebound setting. So you do not want to strike on that with the hammer. So it's put the socket over it. So that has no possibility of getting bent when you're smacking on it. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Felt some fluid come out. And now we are ready to drain the fluid. So I will readjust the camera again so you can see all the fluid drain out. So I'll be right back. All right, we're now ready to pull the lowers off of the stanchion. So I'm gonna angle the fork down. I'm gonna keep a hand on the crown here so they don't fall off while I'm lowering. Go, bring it down slowly. There's some fluid draining out. It's pretty dirty. I don't know if you can see it. And just slowly we go. Let that bring out. It may take a few cycles here going up and down just to get all the fluid out. And once it's out, let's remove it. Just like that. drain for a sec. It may take a few minutes just to get all the fluid out. Once that's out, now we are ready to remove the dust wiper seals and the foam rings that are underneath the dust wipers, and then we'll pop them back on. Okay, now that we have the lower legs off, we are ready to pry out the dust wiper seals. Um, I've already removed this one just to kind of, or pried it out slightly, just so I can show you how it's done. It requires a bit of force, so I couldn't really get it on camera. It took me a lot of tries, but take your wrench, and kind of, I wrap it up in a rag so I don't scratch the body of the lower legs here. You take the, let's see if I can angle this so you guys can see it. Take your lower legs, and you want to get the edge of the wrench in underneath the lip of the seal. So once it's in there, you'll feel it. It's right above the foam ring when you look in there. But you get the wrench right underneath the <coughs> excuse me, the dust seal, and you just pry up. It slipped off. It'll slip off a few times. There we go. Eventually it'll just pop out like that. And I will repeat the process for this side. Just get your wrench. Get underneath the lip of the dust wiper. And you just pry up just like that. Once those are removed, there are, let's see if I can hold this up here little foam rings in here that come out. 
The new kit comes with those, so you can throw those in the drain pan. And now we can clean out the, the uh, tubes in here just to get all the old fluid and dirt or any crud that could have gotten in there. So I will reposition and get back. Okay, now that we have the dust wipers removed, we can clean out the tubes. Just get the old fluid and any dirt that could have gotten in there. So to do that, I like to use a paper towel, kind of soak it in isopropyl alcohol here. Just make it like a big wet glob of alcohol. And then just kind of shove it down the tube I have found this long stick in my garage here. I think it's for use in the yard or something. <laughs> Let's use that and just kind of push it all the way down there. Get all of the dirt and grime out. Especially towards the bottom, I'm sure it's pretty nasty. And then I'll get a screwdriver to help me push that back up and out. Get that paper towel back out. Like that, turn it upside down. See it sticking out there. That'll kind of help get it back out. I'm gonna do that with my stick. There we go. You can see that came out pretty dirty, so I'm kind of glad I did that. So I'm gonna just turn it around, get the clean side. And I'll do it again, do it a couple times here. I'll just do this process a few times on this side and on this side, how I like the way the paper towel looked when I pull it out, and then we'll be ready to install the new dust wipers. Okay, now that the tubes are all cleaned out, we're ready to install our new dust wiper seals and foam rings. Before I, you install the foam rings, what I like to do is soak them in a in the 20 weight fluid. I just cut a bottle in half and pour a little fluid in there. And you can see that they're completely saturated with fluid. And when they're all ready to go, just pull them out. And you just plop them in, just like that. Plop them in, just like that. And now we are ready to install the new dust wipers. What I like to do is take a little bit of the Fox 20 weight and coat the edge of the seal here. And also wipe the inside of the legs here. This kind of helps them go in easier. And a little trick that I found to help the install go, in, go smoothly is I found a cap. I believe it came off a five quart oil jug, but it doesn't matter what it comes off of. You can use PVC, a socket, anything that'll fit over this uh, seal, just like that. You want it to make sure that when you're tapping them in, they go in completely straight. If they don't go in straight, uh, you can risk damaging the seal, and that would not be a good day with your new seals. <clears throat> so all you're gonna do, set it in, until it looks straight, you get your hammer and you just start tapping them in. So I will do that real quick on both sides and I'll get back to you. Okay, I've installed the new dust wiper seals. You can see here you just want them to where they're flush with the leg there just like that um, it's tricky with that without the Fox tool with that cap you just have to be more stubborn than the seal and eventually you'll get it in 
just takes a little patience and a little time, but it beats spending 50 plus dollars for the tool you will you will use one time. But they're all installed and now we are ready to put the lower legs back onto the stanchion. So to do that, I'm going to raise this up. Uh, hopefully you guys can see <clears throat> and then we will get our lower legs and you just start to feed them in get the damper in it's all lined up get the lower leg in okay Go, that side popped in. Just want to make sure you get them all evenly in. There we go. Okay, that moves nice and free. I know it got past the foam rings and they're all installed correctly. So now the trick is getting everything that lined up. Air spring lined up. There it is. Yeah, just like that. First, we need to eject the fluid. Feels pretty good. A little air came out. A little pressure built up in there. I'm happy with the way that feels. So first. Before we install the nuts back on the end of here, I'm going to pull up slightly and we're going to inject our Fox fluids. So first we will start with the damper side. This is the side that has your either your lockout or your compression adjustments and that will be filled with the five weight fluid. Get my syringe here. That'll be 40 milliliters. I have to check the manual there. 40 milliliters of the five weight. All you do is you just stick it in there and inject it slowly. Just like that. All in there. There we go. 40 milliliters. I'll get the 20 weight. And this will be 20 milliliters of the 20 weight fluid on the air spring side, the side that. Uh, where you pump the air into the shock. I'm just going to inject that slowly. Mm. It's all pushed in. Just like that. Now we can slowly push this down and I will get the nut that holds that on. Okay. We're gonna get it till we get the air spring. Let me be ready with the 10 millimeter nut that holds that on. going until it starts to pop out. There we go. I'm just going to hold that on there for now. We'll install the crush washer and I'll get the torque specs. Oops. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but I will find out. Oh, crush washers, pardon me. 
And that's basically all there is to it. Uh, now we will put new crush washers in. I already got a new one in that one. And we'll put a new crush washer on this side. There's also an O-ring that can be replaced right there. We'll torque these to spec. <clears throat> and then we are ready to fill it up with air. And right on. So let me get the new parts. We'll install, torque these, and we'll be on our way. So let me get those parts. Okay, I've installed new crush washers on both sides here. And now we're ready to torque these down to spec. This side, the damper side, is torqued to seven foot-pounds or 84 inch-pounds. And the air spring side is torqued to four foot-pounds or 48 inch-pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench, just use common sense when you're tightening these inch-pounds. Seven foot-pounds and four inch and four foot-pounds are not very tight, so you don't want to go too crazy with them. So I have my torque wrench set, 84 inch-pounds. Up. That should get snug. Spin it around in my thing. There we go. That's torqued. <clears throat> Let me set my wrench to 48 inch pounds. Okay. Get my 10 millimeter socket. Okay, it's starting to get tight. Just like that. Those are all torqued up, ready to go. And now we can install our rebound adjustment knobs. First, I'm just gonna give this a wipe down because it's got some fluid residue all over it. Make sure it's nice and clean. There we go. I'll start with the high speed rebound. And it's like, yeah, you can kind of see it's a hex, so it goes on one way, just like that. Well, there's multiple ways it can go on, but it can go on, only go on one way, the hex. And then you have the low speed rebound with the little spring washer in there. And the set screw goes on the flat part of the rod that sticks out. So if you look at the, can't find it, there it is. If you look at the rod, it's rounded and then there's one flat spot and that's where the set screw goes. For me, it was right here, kind of at the one o'clock position. So I will install just like that. I gotta go get my two millimeter Allen. There we go, Let's switch knobs right here. that down a little bit and that's it everything's smooth freely just like that I'm gonna torque this just a little bit I notice there's play there. and that's it that's all there is to it Dust cap, screw that back on. Now we are ready to fill it back up with air. And I'll put it back down, pump it up, and I'll be right back. Okay, get everything reinstalled under here. Everything's torqued. Now it's time to fill it back up with air. Take that cap off. And I will pump it back up. Pressure I had in there before. I think I was running about 80 psi. Get the pump secured on there. See it's starting to move. Cycle it a few times.
you get the idea. But you just keep pumping it and pumping it until you get to your desired pressure. And uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. All right, I've got it all pumped back up to my old air pressure. I'm gonna reinstall the cap, just like that. Before you reinstall it back on your bike, just give it a good wipe down with uh, some isopropyl alcohol or whatever you use to clean your bike with, just to help get the uh, oily residue off of it. And once you're done with that, just throw it back on and go shred some trails. Thank you for watching this video. I hope uh, it could help you in some way. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. And uh, thanks for watching.